Hey there, about nine months back, I made a video talking about the way that Donald Trump is killing his version of white America through the championing of ridiculous causes like the Confederate statues or his harassment of NFL players, among many, many other things. Over the past month, this process has gone into overdrive. Poorly planned moves from the Trump administration have brought immigration to everybody's attention again. And once again, this has been terrible for Trump's vision of white America. Trump's attempt to use the separation of families to deter immigration has been a horrific failure for his agenda. As with Trump's unleashing of agencies like Customs and Border Protection and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, this brutality may reduce immigration in the short term, but it should increase it in the long term. I should emphasize that very little of the brutality or insanity of these agencies and policies comes from Donald Trump. Both Bush and Obama are much more responsible for these agencies and policies. What Donald Trump has done over the past couple months, however, is draw everybody's attention back to immigration. It's making a whole bunch of people much more aware of the brutality and insanity of the policies we have that are designed to solve a crisis that ended 10 years ago. There is no border crisis. I've got some other videos on that topic. The two years of Trump's presidency have already seen a 10% swing in U.S. attitudes towards immigration. Less than 30% of Americans want less immigration. For the first time since Gallup started asking the question back in 1965. And those polls happened before Trump and Sessions made the question about the abuse of children last month. The U.S. government started separating children from their families. Trump backed down quickly, but some of the children have been lost in the system. This is a horrific situation, and it is causing many to despair. But recent history tells us that this will probably accelerate the country's shift away from Trump's policies on immigration. I'm talking, of course, about California. For many right-wing Americans, California is seen as a hate object. Our richest and most economically powerful state is seen as a refuge for hippies and immigrants that is steadily pushing our country's politics towards the left. What very few realize anymore is that this is a very recent development. Both Reagan and Nixon, our last two successful Republican presidents, had their power bases in California. For most of the 20th century, California was the center of an older idea of white America than even Donald Trump would recognize. The cities of California got their big population pushes from waves of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant refugees from the East Coast. By the 1920s and 1930s, most eastern cities had been taken over by Catholic, Irish, and Italian waves of immigrants. Mike Davis's fantastic book, City of Courts, documents the way that Los Angeles wasps set up an exclusionary form of local government and society that shut out Jews and Catholics just as much as it did people of color. As late as 1960, Los Angeles was still the most waspy of U.S. big cities. You can still find the remnants of this in California's powerful homeowner associations. They put a progressive veneer on the time-honored insistence that only our kind of people should be able to afford to buy houses in our neighborhood. The California suburbs provided reserves of wealth and power for nationwide Republican candidates like Reagan and Nixon, and Republicans were also very powerful in statewide politics as well. Immigration did play a role in changing this, but that's not what killed the Republican Party in California. In fact, it was a boneheaded move by a Republican governor who chose to make the immigration issue all about brutalizing children. Does that sound at all familiar? Compared to Trump, Republican Governor Pete Wilson wasn't such a bad guy. But in 1994, he misread California and national politics in a spectacular way. Unlike today, there actually was a real border crisis. Illegal immigration from Mexico accelerated throughout the 1990s. Pat Buchanan, the guy Donald Trump stole most of his talking points from, had made a serious run at the Republican incumbent in the 1992 presidential primary, contributing to George H.W. Bush's eventual loss. Immigration was Buchanan's big issue. 
Seeing all this, Wilson decided to support a ballot initiative known as Proposition 187 in a big way. Proposition 187 was supposed to create a state-level system to screen immigration status. Those who were found to be in the country illegally would be blocked from accessing state services. This was popular in the short term. The ballot initiative won with 58% of the vote in 1994, and Pete Wilson was re-elected. But after the election, people had to think more deeply about what it meant. The children of immigrants would be barred from public schools, health care, and other services. Thanks to court challenges, the policy was never enacted, but the perceived cruelty of the measure basically killed the Republican Party in statewide politics. It's easy to be against illegal immigration in the abstract. What Proposition 187 did was make it painfully clear how brutal anti-immigrant policies could be. It shifted California politics towards immigration and away from the Republicans. Arnold Schwarzenegger, a very high name recognition candidate, is the only Republican to win the offices of governor or senator since Pete Wilson. Last month, Donald Trump pulled a Pete Wilson. All my social media accounts have absolutely exploded with opposition to U.S. immigration policies. I'm not talking about the normal politics nerds like myself. It's everybody. Nobody likes to see their government brutalizing children. The U.S. immigration policy has been fundamentally broken for decades. Thanks to a small minority of angry, vocal immigration restrictionists, our policies have been getting more and more brutal over the past couple decades. What Donald Trump has just done here is throw open a window so the rest of the country can see what's actually going on. They can see how brutal and insane our policies are. These policies are designed to deal with a problem that ended 10 years ago. Once again, there is no border crisis. And over the past couple of weeks, everybody started talking about that instead of just this channel. That's fantastic. Expect support for immigration in the United States to grow by leaps and bounds. Once again, Donald Trump is taking actions that are tremendously destructive towards the policies his biggest supporters care about most. I'm perfectly okay with that. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you'd like to help me keep making videos like this one, uh, you can click on the PayPal link in the description to donate, or uh, you can click on the Patreon link here to find out more about my crowdfunding thing. Thanks.